805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome everyone to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Connie with Gateway Educational Services. Welcome Connie. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yes, and so Gateway Educational Services, I would love to hear all about what you folks do over there. Gateway Educational Services is a nonprofit uh, college preparatory learning center. So we help students on every level to achieve whatever their academic goals are. And the end in mind for us is college. So college prep. All right. So like what age of kids do you typically serve and what do you actually do for them? So students uh, access us from K through 12. And we begin with assessment. Many of the students that come to us find that they are behind in some way. Parents are concerned. Maybe they're not reading quite as, as well as they thought. You know, there's a new way that we do math now, the Common Core Math, and many parents come in and say, I'm not really sure how this all works. So we begin with assessment to find out how and where we should begin the engagement with the students. And from there, we build an individual program for students, a way wow. to help them cueing with their learning style, working with their learning style to be able to achieve academic success. So you tailor it to each child's Absolutely. style as well as their needs. That's right. We want to be very focused on not being cookie cutter, if you know what I mean, right, but right. really getting to know them, finding out what's your learning style. Are you more visual learner? Are you mm -hmm. audio learner? Mm -hmm. Are you kinesthetic learner? How is it that we can help you? Because unfortunately, in the classroom, teachers aren't often able to spend that time to be able to figure right, out right, those right. things as much. And just seeing a student two or three hours a week, really one-to-one -one individual time is powerful. It's powerful, and they come out confident and motivated to make change. Wow. Okay, so a parent can bring their child K through 12. K through 12. Wow. So they can start like third grade. Oh, I think my third grader isn't quite up to speed. Let me Absolutely. see. Absolutely. That, and third grade amazing. is so important. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that is when we see the drop off on reading, especially at mm -hmm. third graders. Because when we're in third grade, by that time, we should be able to decode and sound out words on our own. And often we find those third, fourth, and fifth graders, we get a lot of fifth graders, mm. who they didn't pick up that skill. They were afraid to try. They don't have the confidence. So being able to kind of dial back outside of the classroom setting and help that student figure it out. That's our focus. Okay, so then the student would typically spend two to three hours with someone at your place once a week. Per, so per week. So maybe they come for three sessions a week or two sessions a week, oh. one hour. Oh, okay, okay, gotcha. One hour, yep, absolutely. All right, and so then you have people there that will, you, like you say, first you start with assessment. That's right, so first we begin with assessment. And after the assessment, we sit and meet with mom and dad and talk oh. about what's been happening. You know, a lot of the students who access us also have special education needs. So they may have ADHD, they may have something called audio processing disorder, just different issues that they're struggling with. Perhaps they've been given what's known as an IEP, an individual education program, mm -hmm. and mom and dad are struggling to manage that. How do we do this? How, How do we, we get help? Okay. Yes, so we provide that support to parents uh, in, in ways that parents can understand. Invaluable. Wow. Wow. If I was a parent and I was worried about my child, man, I would love to know about your service. So, so how do they find out? How do parents or kids find out? Well, they can go to our website, okay. gatewayeducationalservices.org, so you can look on our website. We also, I think, every time the phone rings, and this is a pleasure, really, it's someone saying, 
you know, another mom told me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, word of mouth. That's word always of mouth. the best, isn't uh, yeah, it? Yeah, it is the best because it, it tells us that parents see value in what we're doing. They see change. They see progress. So those moms, are I call them my mommy evangelists. They're so out great. there telling yes, and spread yes. the word, and they're happy yeah. to see and, and tell other people, this is what happens. You have an issue. You better call Gateway. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so that happens a lot. So where are you located? So we're in the Turnpike Shopping Center oh. across the street from San Marcos High School. Okay. We're on the other side of Play It Again Sport. So if you've ever taken yeah. your kids to Play It yeah, Again Sport, yeah. we're on the other side of the building. Gosh. And so um, what about the cost? How, how do parents pay for that? So we everything is on a sliding scale. Okay. And we really try and do whatever we can to make certain that every parent and every family can afford what we're doing. But it is on a sliding scale based on your income. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So when you think about the kids that come through, most of them come because their parents bring them, right? Right. Do, do you have many of the older ones that come by themselves or no, it's always a parent? Not usually. Usually okay. mom and dad are still in the driver's seat in terms yeah. of helping to make those decisions. We do have a college readiness program. Mm. Now those students often will be referred through a counselor oh. uh, or, or someone else who's been through the program that really are interested in getting to college. Our focus is college readiness, so preparing them, you know, SAT, ACT, um, helping them with applications, how oh, to write a gosh. personal statement. You know, yes, that brings yes. a lot of trauma into a young life. How do we figure out for the very first yeah. time how we write those applications and what we do and the process. For first generation families, this is essential. They oh, don't gosh. know how to navigate this. They haven't had experience and yeah. mom and dad would love you to go to college, but they're not really sure what they have to do to make yeah. it happen. And so we help students beginning with their junior year and we spend the next 18 months or so together walking through this experience in the College Readiness wow. Program. Wow, what a valuable experience. It's a wonderful experience. It's extremely rewarding for us. This is a great time of year. We begin to get really fun text messages from students saying, oh, I gosh. got in, I got oh, in. Oh, gosh. And, it, you know, we just love this time of year. When you think of the people, the kids who come through, are most of them then the older ones, or is it like all it's over the map? It's a mix. It's a mix. Yeah. So, I mean, there are some that are as young as six and seven, and like I said, the college readiness program, there's a group of seniors that uh, are about to be seniors that we're working with and a group that we are so excited to start going to graduations as they come up in the next couple of weeks that we'll be going to a lot of graduation ceremonies oh, to celebrate with them and celebrate I with their families. I bet you do go to a lot of graduations. We do. We love that. We love that. Gee. And so how long have you been doing this? Since 2009. We started Gateway in 2009 with really the desire to see change. You know, so educators, business people, I mean, we all kind of came together, the board. Uh, I'm one of the founders. The other founder is Audrey Gamble. We came together to say, what is it that we could do that would be different? And maybe is this possible in a nonprofit model? Not necessarily a for-profit model, but yeah. can we do this in a nonprofit way, in a nonprofit model? It seemed like it should be a natural relationship, like it should happen. So there we went, and, and it was a challenging time. You know, we were coming out of the Great Recession. 2009, People yes. People thought we were crazy. Yes. <laughs> you two ladies, what are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the need, knowing the need. You Seeing saw that children, need. Absolutely. Absolutely. How did Seeing you children, see the need? What, what From it working with itself? families and, and kids and hearing about kids that needed help and then kids saying, well, there's no place to go or parents who said, well, we went to this other place. It was really expensive. We couldn't oh, afford it. We only went twice because, you know, we couldn't afford $100 an hour. Right. Yeah. So knowing that there had to be a different way. There had to be a different way. Well, good for you. So, you know, so you've been doing this now for almost 10 years. Almost, yeah. I bet you might have a story to tell us oh, about somebody's life. we have great life stories. We have great stories. Uh, one of the stories I can think of is a young man that we just had the opportunity to celebrate with him. He was given a scholarship for college through the Kiwanis. Oh. Uh, we're members of the Kiwanis. Yay, Kiwanis. We Yay, Kiwanis. Kiwanis. Yeah, yeah, we love Kiwanis. And uh, his name's David. We saw David when he was th in third grade, and his parents brought him really? because he was so frustrated. Just even holding a pencil and gripping a pencil, the pencils would snap, and he would cry. He would erase. Oh. His father said he started wearing dark colors all of a sudden oh, no. and just seemed to, to go inside himself. 
So when David came, this was a really tough experience. He was very behind in reading. Mm. He was very behind in the basics. So David has been with us in and out for quite a while. So that early engagement was able to take David in about a year and a half to, to come out above grade level, really. Gee whiz. And then so by the time he came to junior high, he was in honors classes, high school, AP classes, and he came through the college readiness program, and he's off to college this fall. At oh, university. my gosh. So it's amazing. Connie, what a story. Yeah, it, what a story, and such a great partnership with his parents. And I, and I think yeah. that's the thing that we really want to be able to say is that we partner with families and parents. We want yeah, them yeah, to yeah. know we're here to support. So, you know, our cell phones and text messages go off at all kinds of hours oh, sometimes yeah. of frustration or just needing help. Yeah. So that, or I can think of a family that we have in now, the brother, mm -hmm. but his older sister came to us with really high remediation in math. And from the counselor standpoint, she really wasn't going to be college material. Oh. I mean, kind of like, meh, maybe she could do a vocational program or yeah. something. But you know what she had it was a lot of determination. So partnering with her to say, all right, let's begin with where the math is difficult for you. And let's figure it out together. So she went through the college readiness program, and she's about to become a junior at university. So she's oh, at Cal State Channel Island. Oh, my gosh. And her younger brother is in the college readiness program right now. So he's a junior at uh, San Marcos High School. And baby brother is getting ready to go to junior high, and we have our eye on what's next for him, too. Gosh. So this is an amazing opportunity. We yes. can change the whole trajectory oh, for a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the whole family now is a gateway family. They, they, tell, they tell other families, oh, no, we're a gateway family. Oh, man. And that's what fun. That's fun to hear. For that's you. fun to hear. You it saw is. a need. You started it nine mm -hmm. years ago. You've been faithful to that. And now you're just seeing the fruit. Gee yeah. whiz. And sometimes students access us in ways that you wouldn't think were academic support. So we do summer programs, and our summer programs include a photojournalism class, oh. which is super fun. Yeah. Uh, I have some background in being a photographer, so I get to take them out and teach them that. Mm -hmm. And it's writing. So it's kind of a writing camp without telling them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, which is really fun. That's ages 10 to 13. STEM camp for girls is especially close to our hearts now oh. as women because young women are still not accessing STEM careers. Mm. Fewer than 13% of STEM careers right now are filled by women. So STEM camp for girls, we're trying to light that spark to get them interested in, in science, math, and technology. So those are some of the things that we even do in the summer. So learning never stops for us. It's year round. We have students that access us year round. That is so great. So. Gosh, I just feel like we need to shout this from the rooftops. Oh, thank you. And so uh, people can go on your website. They, they can, can figure out how to get a hold of you. Absolutely. And where you're located and how to, you know, ask the questions they need for their children. And That's all. right. That's right. Well, oh, my gosh, Connie, this is so exciting. I'm so glad to know about it. Thank you. And uh, I know other people will be excited, too. And thank you for all your good work. Oh, well, thank you. And thanks for being with us today. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. Bye.